Good afternoon. Um, I am Carl Meyer. I'm, I'm honored to be speaking among the folks that have invited me here today. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Mass Forest. Thank you, Restore, Trap Rock, Vermont Trees, um, Joe Gravelin. It's hard to speak about a river that's barely alive and has been barely alive for a half century now. Um, and I stand here and I hope the humility comes across because speaking on behalf of something as alive and important and central to everyone that's sitting out there right now, it's an awesome responsibility. And, you know, I'm only here because I think probably I'm the best person to speak to it. Uh, yet, I have ten minutes, and I'm going to walk away from here feeling like I have failed, like I haven't done enough. Um, and the truth of the matter is, everybody else has failed this river, um, from, the, from the federal agencies that have been supposed to be protecting it, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Wendy Weber, Director, the National Marine Fisheries Service, who are supposed to be protecting the federally endangered short-nosed sturgeon not a mile away from here, uh, Michael Pentany, Director, Mass Division of Fish and Wildlife, Mark Tiza, Director, I'm forgetting someone, oh, Martin Suber. Mass Division of Environmental Protection Director. I'm calling all these people out because this river has died and, and, and it has is, it is literally been in critical condition because of First Light's Northfield Mountain Pub Storage Station literally running backwards often. A common occurrence day after day after day. It is not a hydro plant. I want to give you just two uh, examples, and I want you to remember these because it is the perfect illustration of how Northfield operates, how deadly it is, and how our climate is being massively impacted by something called ISO New England, the Independent Systems Operator. So please, do not ever think that Northfield Mountain has anything to do with hydro. All it cares about is the weight of water. It is a deadly fish killer that sucks a river backwards and up into a, mile, a reservoir a mile away at a rate of 15,000 cubic feet per second. 15,000 cubic feet per second is if you go to HUD housing, it's about the size of seven three-bedroom homes, about 2,000 square feet, seven of those disappearing, full of aquatic life, fish, aquatic animals. Nothing that goes up Northfield Mountain comes down alive. It is considered, anything that goes into that plant is considered functionally extirpated, dead. So here's what Northfield really operates on. It is a grid parasite, the deadliest machine ever installed on the Connecticut River. Remember this. Number one, ISO New England, um, ISO New England uh, energy mix. Um, and you just, you go to this page and you will see the real time, go to real time, I am still doing the real time, and there will be graphs, and there will be a pie chart, and it will tell you that very minute what the energy mix is on the uh, ISO New England, the region's power grid. Today it's about 50% climate scorching frack gas. 50%. Another 20 is probably nuclear. But we are, this is a climate emergency, and is ISO New England telling you that? They are not, but that is what's pushing a river backwards and killing it day after day after day for the last 50 years. ISO New England real time. Check out the site any day of the week. You can find out why we are in this emergency. And there's one more site I want you to go to which shows you actually the violence that Northfield Mountain causes on the Connecticut River. 
And for that one, you just type in Connecticut River at Montague. And you will see a graph that looks like a heart attack followed by a stroke. It goes like this. It goes like that. And it is virtually the six foot intervals that Northfield Mountain is allowed to suck out of the Connecticut River measured at the, at the dam here. But it actually is it's recorded about two miles downstream here, right where the bikeway bridge crosses in Deerfield. And they like to say, well, this, this graph could be affected by other things, right? It could be affected by stuff that's all the way up at, uh, water being released all the way up at the Vermont uh, at Canadian border. It could be affected by the Deerfield River. But it's not. It almost exactly mirrors what Northfield Mountain does every day up and down, 10,000 feet, down to 1,500 feet, cubic feet per second. And you know how you know that it's exactly what Northfield does? Because if, if you dialed it in back at the end of May, all of a sudden, the peaks, the heart attack stopped, and it was a flat line. And I said to myself, Northfield stopped running. And I got on my little bicycle because I'm a strange person that bicycles all the time. And I went up to Northfield Mountain and I saw the cranes sitting there and their stop logs waiting to, pull, to be put in. And that meant that Northfield Mountain had stopped its killing for the day. And for the week. And so you saw that flat line. Put those in your head and put them in your hearts when you want to see what the river is like. Do you want to know who First Light Power is? Let, let, let's go there for a second. First Light Power is nothing like First Light as a brand name. It's like uh, Oreos or whatever. It's just they are here as a giant venture capital firm. They came down in 2016. Their name is Public Sector Pension Investments. They are a monster size private public venture capital outfit that is, has offices in London and Ottawa. And they came down here not to help the Connecticut River. They came here for their shareholders. They bought the Connecticut River and all these rights to Northfield, the deadliest plant, for a bargain price of about $1.2 billion. It had sold twice in the, the previous decade for $1.6 and a little bit more. Everybody wrings their cash out of Northfield but nobody wanted to sort of get saddled with what they were going to do when the license came due. But the license seems to never come due. Because I've been part of the relicensing. I've been a stakeholder, an intervener. I think I'm the only person here who can say that I both quit Northfield Mountain. I was once on the safety committee up there. And I also worked for the Connecticut River Watershed Council, and I quit them twice because neither one was doing anything good for the river. The second one is sort of a big friends group. It's, it's difficult to stand before you and sort of not be able to say that this whole process, it thrives in secrecy. When was the last time you heard anybody stand in front of Northfield Mountain and say, this thing kills? I watched Andy Fish, the Watershed Council Conservancy's uh, director, about a year and a half, almost two years ago in the fall, do a nice little junket, and they paddled away from the very mouth of that machine, from the giant sucking mouth of that machine. There were TV cameras there, there were newspapers there. Did Andy Fish stand up and say, this thing kills? No, they did not. Meanwhile, they signed a nice agreement with First Light for recreational kayaking, canoeing, and rafting. And meanwhile, the license just goes on and on and on. The license expired for Northfield Mountain April 30th, 2018, which happens to be my damn birthday, and I thought I'd be free of this thing by now. I am not, I cannot put this down because I'm afraid if I do, everyone else, there's no one else that's going to do the job that I do. And I'm not bragging. I just know too much. I've been inside this thing for 10 years that way. I've been writing about it for 25 years. I've worked there. 
This is a dead river. No, I went to the dam today and I threw a little grass in there, right? There is no water being pushed over the river, over that dam. There is virtually nothing going over that dam today. I threw a leaf in, it went nowhere. I sat there and watched it. There's a little bit of water they spill back in when they put, when they put it through the canal. 125 cubic feet per second. That's the size of a little stream. Go on the other side of that bridge and you should be up in arms. There are just puddles there. I've intervened on behalf of the Connecticut River short-nosed sturgeon, which is the only federally endangered fish on the Connecticut River. I intervened four years ago. That wasn't my job. That was the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service job. That was National Marine Fisheries. They're responsible for that fish. When a river flows backwards, where is Massachusetts Division of Environmental Protection for 50 years? There are laws being broken every single day. And migratory fish are today, this very day, I promise you, every time Northfield is running, it is a death machine. Only 23,000 American shad made it above the Turner's Falls Dam this year. We were supposed to get 850,000 beginning in 1967. That was a promise that U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Marines, Fisheries, Mass Division made to us. They turned it into a salmon program. Salmon had not been here since 1809. About a decade after the first bull dam was put here, right at Turner's Falls in 1798. You don't try to bring back a fish on the southernmost river it ever colonized in the time of climate change. And by the time those fish went extinct, the climate was already changing. We had, we had decimated the region's forests. The, 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 the hills were emptied of trees. We're talking about trees right now. I just want to make a small connection because this is a cross-state effort today. And I want to reach out to the people of the Harry Pond Wampanoag just, just to make connections. Way back after many of us got arrested at Seabrook, anybody remembers that? Because Northfield was originally, was originally uh, run on, before this, it was run on nuclear power in Vermont Yankee until Yankee closed. So it was, it was run on the glut of excess energy from Yankee. Okay. But the Harry, so, so after Seabrook, some of us, two weeks in the armory, some of us were stubborn enough to say, I'm not paying my fine, arrest me. And we did our, we did our jail time on prison farms like Epping, New Hampshire. But a friend of mine and I, every year we would go down and listen to Slow Turtle in the late 70s and early 80s of the Wampanoag down at Plymouth and listen to what he had to say. And the connection that I want to make quickly, and I may get run off the stage for having too much to say today, but I got invited by a gentleman in Sunderland yesterday into a 302-year-old house. One of these fabulous old salt boxes, right? They, used to, they were just these drafty old beasts. But it was wonderful to go inside. But what struck me and what really touched me was I went in there and there were these 20 inch panels and floorboards. And I always think, oh, they must be chestnut, you know, because we all talk about the chestnut is gone. They were not chestnut. They were hard pine. They were pitch pine. They were straight boards that came right out of the Montague Plains. Straight, tall, giant trees reaching back at least to the time of 1660, when there was still a language here in the Pocomtuck, when, the, when there was still the cultures here. And the only person that I think we have, I personally have as a hero, on the Connecticut River, I think it happened, I don't know how, 1975. If Sam Lovejoy was out here, I'd give him a hug right now, because he went up against the power company. He did the job that a 20-year-old watershed council should have done and toppled a tower and saved the Montague Plains from having two 
nuclear power plants which we'd be entertaining today and which would be sucking the life-giving water out of the Connecticut River. And as far as the salmon goes, I know some of you people think, well, it's kind of awful that we didn't, we, we, we didn't make a new salmon, but those salmon were, were actually extinct. There's another hero of mine, a woman named Catherine Carlson, who did archaeology at UMass and wrote a paper showing that those salmon had only been here for a couple of hundred years. They had swung south on an arctic gear, uh, 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 something called the Little Ice Age, that just occurred for, for about 400 years. It happened in Europe. It's, it's historically known. And so they came and they colonized. But then the planet started to warm again. The gear started to go, go away. And by that time, we had built so many little dams that the last dam cut off the salmon. And today, and I think people would like to know this, Catherine Carlson is working for the first people in British Columbia, working in concert with them. And I am proud to say it took me five years to write about how awful the salmon program is and how it was masking the fact that our shad and our herring that were supposed to be here since starting in 1967 have not made it past this dam. They have not made it past this dam since 1798. They were supposed to. In 1955, they had a bucket lift at Holyoke. If we had built this, we would have got our 700,000 shaft. We're supposed to be eating from this river. I will be with this river until the last dog dies. But right now, right now, and I want to, I, and as I see people in the back here, there is a petition going around, put together, and printed up by Trap Rock and trees Vermont in the back. Please read the petition and sign it. It is important right now because the entire future of the Connecticut River is being decided in secrecy. I've never taken a dime from First Light because their money buys them silence, it buys them secrecy, it buys them publicity and it buys them profit while they are off spending hundreds of millions of dollars in New York State and buying up other other river operations down on the Allegheny River to, to work in favor of their marketing interests. They have not spent a dime on this river. It is four years past their license expiration. Five years since they were supposed to put water back in this river if there was a watchdog or an honest agency. I wanted, I'm going to stop here and say please go and sign the petition, but read the petition. The petition is over with the trap rock table and over by the banners. By stop line three, those people are waving to you. The petition is... <laughs> I, stop. Just, just give me a the petition is to shut down Northfield Mountain, the deadliest machine ever installed on the Connecticut River. There's a lot of fun stuff happening today, folks, but I want you to do one thing. This is immediate. They have no right. This is the public's river. A Canadian capital organization should not be here. And speaking of treaties, I've been reading through the local treaties because I'm a pretty good historian. The ultimate quit claim and right to this river should not go to a Canadian capital pension firm in Canada. It is the ultimate sellout of your children and their grandchildren. Thank you.